What's up? What's happening, everyone? I'm your host, Jared Rosenthal, and welcome to The Real. If you're an NBA player, you're doing everything you possibly can in order to get that ring. So, beg, borrow, steal, KD is doing whatever it takes. And yes, he probably should have won an OKC. Probably should have. But for him to go to the Bay Area and get those rings, I still think they're meaningful. You still got to win those games. And in fact, he was the MVP in those series where they won. So it's not like he was on the sides just watching this all fold out. In fact, he was the one orchestrating that offense and defense too. He plays all sides of the ball. I think he's the best two-way player in the game. Kawhi, you can make that debate for as well. But I think KD, with his resume, the way he's played throughout the years, progress, MVP, I see something in him that is just unmatchable. We look at number one, Landry Shamit. Okay, yes, he performed against the Warriors and he had that, that three point shot with 16 and a half seconds left to give them that 31 point comeback. But then again, if we look at his projections, in by 2021, that's the first year he's gonna have a positive plus minus on offense. And that's gonna be 0.4. So do they really need him? And honestly, his defense isn't that great. A guy of his size should be averaging at least one block per game. Three. If you could get Kobe Bryant to replace that Magic Johnson void, I think you attract a lot of people there. I think, because right now, LA, at least the Lakers, it's not a really attractive place right now. No. Everyone wants to go to the Clippers of anything. I would, I would at least, because there's just too much drama there. If you get Kobe to come in, a hard worker, this guy with that Mamba mentality, he's got rings to show for it. He's, he's friends with the players. He talks to Tatum on the regular. <laughs> if you can get him into your organization to actually work there, now I know he could possibly ruin his reputation, but if you can get him there, you had an interesting case for any free agent, any player. Coming to you live in three, two, one. You need to be in that situation. They can crack this code. That game. A great shot of winning. More accountable. That's the one reason why. This is just laziness. They were an offensive threat. The most pressure. I disagree. The number of second chance opportunities that the Warriors had compared to the Blazers, astronomical. We look at the number of rebounds they had, and you saw in game three, the Warriors had 56 rebounds compared to the Blazers 39, which ultimately made them lose because the Warriors had more points in the paint by a ton. How did you exactly transition from that summer league game getting poked in the eye and coming out, you know, as, as a true warrior? Well, thanks for your words. You know, I was, I was proud. Uh, you know, I came back and played for three years professionally. The Ducks, they've got some really high expectations this year. They've got a great O-line in Calvin Throckmorton and Shane Lemieux. Tell me, how does this team compare to other teams of the past? Maybe the best. Uh... They're super blue collar. They're just, they'll outwork you, dig for every inch. And, and a lot of teams like to space out. You know, they like, they like to use those air raid offenses, those RPOs, but Paul Chris, he, he sticks to the fundamentals. And he, he says, no, we're gonna, we're gonna crush you with the I formation. We have solid receivers like Quintus Cephas, Jake Ferguson, Garrett Groshek, and, and we're just gonna out hustle you with Jonathan Taylor. They're just not good under pressure. And we look them against ranked teams, it's just ridiculous. It's not good. They're just not good. And the, the pressure gets them. We saw it book through two interceptions, and they had five false starts as a team. You can't let the crowd get to your head like that. You just you just can't, or you're gonna lose so many games. They gave themselves a chance when Chase Claypool scored that touchdown. My my only problem with AM is they don't really have a run game. It was shut down. When you can't even run past 60 yards and your quarterback's throwing for 335, that's just too much of an imbalance. Nick Castellanos, I love this move. He has the most doubles in the MLB since 2017 with 119. This guy, he's a contact hitter, and the Cubs need someone like him. They they need to put the ball in play. And this is the perfect decision. They see the game as just a fun game. They're not serious. Like, if you look, they're a very jolly, very hyped up, happy yeah. club. Michigan State, I'm just loving the way they're playing right now. They're awesome. Cassius Winston is the guy. He's able to create his own shot with such ease. And I love his mid-range game. That floater he has, mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. They just are turnover machines. And That's too many. That's way too many. They're careless with the ball. And I don't know what their deal is. Devin Dotson, you know, LeGerald Vick, just... Deidre Gloss and anyone out there, they need to handle the ball well. Because a team like this, you're not going to go far if you're turning the ball over close to 20 times per game. We, we out. out.